Hey guys, I am going to talk about my local game store in Williamsburg, Virginia. And Williamsburg, Virginia is a very small place. Um, you probably heard of it, Busch Gardens, Colonial Williamsburg. There's obviously a prestigious school there and that's where I went. I went to a 20, top 20 school in that profession. And I got to do a lot of fun stuff there. But there was only one local game store in the whole Williamsburg. Because it, again, it's a very tiny city, but like it's kind of weird that it would only have one store because it is a college town, right? Where all the, where I would imagine more people play Magic than not. Then like, you know, I mean, like even like a bigger city uh, because it's students, right? That's your target demographic would be students as opposed to like a retirement home where I don't think anyone would play Magic really. So this store was called, when I first went to the store, it was called Groovy Geckos. And it had a different logo. The logo was the little gecko and it was like Groovy Geckos, right? Then the store owner, um, who was a larger man, who I think he was from the military, but he was kind of large. Uh, he retired and he sold the store as well as the stock to another guy. Then that other guy ran the business for a few I guess a few weeks it lasted and then they bankrupt and they had to liquidate all of their assets. So a lot of the cards had to be, you know, the stock had to go away. They were confiscated or repoed or I don't know what, but are sent back to the distributor. They were carrying a lot of Warhammer. So if you know anything about Warhammer, it's an expensive game to get into initially, but then at that point you're just using tables for free, there's not really... Um, a issue. So that was the first time in bankrupt. The then my friend Graham, who lived in the you know he literally lived in the apartment next to me. Like just like I could see his apartment from where I lived. Good dude. I sold him my magic cards uh, at the time, including you know play sets of Force of Will, Foil of Chroma Original. That's one I missed. That's one I missed um, a lot. And. The large majority of my collection he purchased, um, he came over to my apartment, he repurchased it, and off we went. That store then bankrupt. Um, it became unfeasible, and then it went up again, and he owned it again. It was like a weird partnership, and so in the beginning, he had a partnership with uh, another person, and that person A, and then the store bankrupt, and then he got a partnership, and then he owned the store himself, then it bankrupt again, and then he got a partnership with person B, and then bankrupt again, and then he person B just ended up own, owning the store. So person B had his brother run the store. Uh, his brother knew nothing about Magic the Gathering at all. Uh, he was, person B was just a Warhammer guy. At that time, it was called Phoenix, well, at some time it was called Phoenix Games, and then it was called Phoenix Games Reborn. So it went from Groovy Geckos to Groovy Geckos like Limited or something to Phoenix Games and then to Phoenix Games Reborn and then finally it bankrupt for good. And the reason they primarily bankrupt in my opinion was because of the Warhammer stuff. Um, they, Warhammer is very hard to move when your player base already has the um, armies if you would. So instead of carrying like really good magic stop, which is movable, they carried a ton of Warhammer, which takes a lot of space. Like Warhammer does platforms and landscapes and all that type of stuff. Warhammer takes a ton more space than Magic the Gathering. And at least after the initial purchase, cost less money. Um, and the inventory just I mean, it's expensive in inventory. It's incredibly expensive in inventory for a store to have. And that's how the store bankrupt four times. I Last time I visited it was uh, two years ago and the store did not exist. I feel like it was like a salon or something. But a uh, very, very sad story about um, a store that I fell in love with. The people were amazing. Uh, that was, you know, my greatest connection with people at a magic place was at that store. Uh, since then, you know, I've loved the anime store I play at. I love the people there. Uh, the bigger store I play at is 
I mean, if I want to do something a little bit bigger or closer to my home, I'll go there. But it's not like something that I would say, hmm, um, I would get overly excited about, like I would about Groovy Geckos or my anime store, right? Anyway, bye guys.